Hi everyone, welcome back to another scripting tutorial for Space Engineers. So, in this here tutorial, it comes from a user called Scooby Doo, and they had an issue where they had interior lights going around the edge of, say, like an airtight door. And what they wanted to do was they wanted them all to be changed, you no, know, like changing in color. And what would happen is, whenever this door opens, uh, these lights will go red, and if it's closed, it'll go green to the state that it's currently in. Now, let's just give a quick demonstration of how that even works. So, let me do when I press this button. We can see that they all go red. So, that's just changing the color of all of them. And we're waiting for it to fully open. And I'll wait. And then I'll close the door again. So go over here and close it. And you can see it's still red. And when it goes down to the bottom closed position, it'll go green again. There we go. Now, the good thing is about this here is that it checks every single airtight door. So as you've seen, that button opens every single one. But what happens if you open just the one door? So we'll quickly do that. Now you can see that just the one door, even with that there, it'll go red. And I'll quickly turn it back to close again. And you'll see that it will go back to green. So this is using the thing called groups, which is very confusing. So I'll go through it as much as I can. So let's flick over to our other screen here. And this is the code behind it. Now, it is quite a lot. It's got uh, 72 lines of code. There's quite a few spaces in between it, but never mind that. It's probably about 60 lines altogether. Now, it is very, very confusing. It did take me a while. Uh, I've never used groups before because I've never encountered them, but it is a great learning curve for them. So, I'll try and explain this as best as I can. Now, what we're going to do is we're doing the standard thing. So, every 10 game ticks we are going to run this code so I uh, can't remember how many ticks there is uh, in a in a uh, no oh accidentally changed on here I can't remember how many ticks there is no every second I think it's like 100 and 140 or something it's something weird anyway but every 10 ticks we want to run this here piece of code so first thing is first we want to set the variables so we want to set the total warfare hangar doors to zero and the total warfare hangar door closed to zero they'll come into this here now in a second I'll explain what that does so first thing is first as you may know we want to find a group called warfare hangar doors now in the past we've done we're finding a block but in this case we're going to be looking for a group so what we're going to do is we're going to find a group called warfare hangar door and get a list of warfare hangar doors inside that group so whenever you have like a list of entities on your like say your ship you can have things like from interior lights to turrets to uh, thrusters, etc. But when you put interior, uh, when you put airtight hangar doors into a group on their own, they say there's six of them. That group has six entities inside it. So what you want to do is you want to create a list from that group. So that's the list there. So that list contains all those warfare hangar doors in it. And then what you want to do is hangar door test group dot get blocks of type warfare hangar doors. So you want to get the blocks of that type so in that group you only want to get entities with warfare hangar door so that's from up here so you're only interested in hangar door so if the group contain things like interior lights you're going to exclude them you only want warfare hangar doors so get block of the type warfare hangar door next thing you want to do is count how many of those how many of those warfare hangar doors are inside that group so what you want to do is total warfare hangar door equals door to warfare hangar door dot count so that is counting how many warfare hangar doors there is in it and then what you want to do is you want to display that on the wee debug panel so when you go back in the game when you go to program block you see on the right hand side in the wee screen that you just want to place that in there that's just used for debugging but I'm just leaving that in there for just to make things a bit easier second thing you want to do is you want to do the exact same thing as up here but you want to do it for the interior lights so what you want to do is you want to find a group called hangar interior light and get a list of interior lights inside that group and this is where you look for that group name so the group name is hangar interior light so you get all your interior lights you put them into a group called hangar interior light like this here try to avoid using spaces it's just a lot easier for coding and capitalize the first letter if you can so what you want to do is you want to put them into a list and in that list you only want to get 
hanger interior lights, so get block type hanger interior light. You're only interested in interior lights, so if the lights included, say, rotating lights and other entities, you're only interested in the hanger interior light. So, that is your block declarations. Very confusing, I know, but for some reason, people, this will, you know, come to them like a duck on water, but this here, guess, it is, no, it is very, very confusing, so I am trying to explain it as best I can. Now, so we got that bit up here done. Now we go on to the next bit, which is slightly easier. It should be a lot easier to sort of understand. So, as there can be many warfare hangar doors in a group, the code will check each door to see what's stated in. So, for example, if you had, say, 10 warfare hangar doors on your ship and they're all in a group, what you want to do is you want to count how many, of the, how many doors are in that group. And you want to check to see what state each of them in so pretty much what you want to do is you want to check like say if you had the three that's in our game at the moment you want to check the first one see if it's open or closed check the second one see if it's open and closed and check the third one see if it's open and closed and in previous tutorials we only check for one entity so the state is either this or that but because we have multiple entities we want to check to see if they're all the same or if they're slightly different so what you do is for each and you have to create a variable here so in war for hangar doors so I'm trying to explain this as best as I can, but what you want to do is for each warfare hangar door that is in that group, you want to check to see what state it is in. So, as you go through each one, so if you go through, say there's three uh, on your ship, you want to go through each one, and as you go through each one, you want to call it different things. So, for ma imagine that the, what the program is doing is, you've got three uh, warfare hangar doors, and checks the first one, and that says that's warfare hangar door one. Warfare hangar door 2 and warfare hangar door 3 and that's pretty much what this variable does here. And then what this is doing is, is checking that variable warfare hangar 1 and warfare hangar door 2 etc. And just seeing what state it is in. Now we're only interested in the state is see if it is closed. And if it is closed what we want to do is we want to change the total warfare hangar door closed by 1. So I will explain later on why this is important but pretty much what it's doing is you want to check to see how many doors are closed so for example if you had two doors that were opened and one was closed it's going to be one if two of them were opened and one of them is closed so if two were closed and more one was open it's going to be two and you get the point so if all three doors are closed it's going to be three and because this here is going to be running and this here is going to be true if they are closed you don't want this here to exceed the number of doors in the game because that doesn't make sense because whenever this here statement is true what it's going to do is it's going to keep running it and because it's going to keep running it's going to keep adding one to it so for example if you had three warfare hanger doors and they were all closed what will happen is this here will start incrementing and it'll exceed three and keep going into infinity and it'll just keep doing that on and on and on so what this bit down here is doing is is checking to see if the number of doors closed exceeds the total amount of doors in that group if it does decrement it by one and by decrementing by one what it does is it keeps that total number of doors closed equal with the total number of doors in the game hope that makes sense uh, we'll go down to it in a bit more and as we go along and then this statement down here is doing the opposite so if the warfare hangar door is not closed you want to minus one so the number of doors closed minus one so what will happen is you'll have negative three doors that are that are opened that's okay we can cope with that so pretty much if it's negative three that means that the doors are open if it is plus three the doors are closed and again what this bit down here do is doing is, is making sure that it doesn't exceed minus three for like the number of doors that's in the game so that bit there is very confusing but i hope i've explained that as best i can if anybody's having any doubts do write in the comments or visit the Discord channel and I will try to see if I can explain it a bit more better. But I am trying to do this as much as I can. Um, so this section below, this entire bit down here, is actually controlling the lights, the state of the lights itself. So this section below controls the colour of the lights in the hangar interior light group. So if you have a group of interior lights called hangar interior light group, this is where you want to specify it here. So first thing is first, you want to check to see if the total amount of warfare hangar doors closed matches the total amount of warfare hangar doors in the group. So pretty much, if there is three doors in the group and all of them are closed, you want to change it to green. 
So this is what this here does. And this for each goes through every interior light in the group and changes it to green. So it goes through, if you have a group of say 20 interior lights, it's going to go through each one of them each uh, tw uh, until it gets to 20 of them and change them all to green. And this is what this here does for each uh, hanger interior light, change it to green. This bit does the opposite. So if, for example, you have three interior doors and one of them is closed, that means two is open. So you want to change it to red. And this is what this bit does here. This line here changes it all to red. And the for each goes through each interior light in the group and makes sure that they're all changed to red. So the for each is pretty much self-explanatory for every, for each, for every interior light in the group, change it to red. Then we come to the very last bit and we want to print the total warfare hanger doors closed to the debug panel. So what will happen is if everything is working, if we have three hanger, uh, warfare hanger doors that are closed um, and we have three, four, three warfare hanger doors in the game, well then they're both equal. So yeah, it should be green. So if we have three warfare hanger doors that are open and we have three warfare hanger doors, well that means that they are open, so go to red. So that's pretty much what all this here does. I hope I hope I've explained this as best I can. This is probably ah uh, I think this is more confusing and more difficult than the combination lock that I had done uh, a few episodes ago. So I uh, yeah it is um pretty much difficult. So if you're new to working with groups and say for example, let's say I'll probably do this in a new video. We'll probably do another t uh, tutorial where for example if any of our thrusters or something is damaged. Oh that would be a good tutorial actually. Yeah, If we can check to see if certain entities are damaged, we'll do a count as to how many um, entities have been damaged and print that to a debug panel. That'll be a bit more of a basic script. Probably should have started off with that but because this here was for Scooby Doo, they wanted um, a group of lights all to change colour depending on the state of a door. Now what you could have done is you could have easily subtracted quite a lot of this code if you checked one warfare hanger door. This would have been probably half the size it is at the moment but because you're going to have multiple warfare hanger doors it's better to check all of them and that's how you do it here. So if you are looking to copy this code into your game the two things you only need to change is this one and this one, depending on what groups you have. So uh, say for example, you had a group of warfare hanger doors, make sure that the group name is this here. So I've put a wee comment here on the end, just make sure you change this one. So for example, if you had a list of warfare hanger doors in like a airtight seal, say like ship airtight seal one, make sure this is called uh, ship airtight seal one, and that's the group of your uh, airtight hanger doors that you have in it. Same down below here for your interior lights. If you had a group of interior lights called emergency lights, say, for example, put them all into a group called emergency lights and make sure you call this emergency lights here as well. So this is just the name of the group of interior lights you have. This is just the name of the group of uh, airtight hanger doors that you have here. So in this case, I've called it warfare hanger door and this one here is called hanger interior light. Hope that makes sense. If you want to copy this code, do visit the website that is linked down in the description. There you'll be able to see this script as well as all the scripts that we have uh, on the channel. If you are looking for any script yourself, I've spent many hours doing this here. I thought it was going to be very, very simple. But if you have any scripts yourself that you would like um, made or debugged, do send them over to me on my Discord channel and we will try to see if we can get a workaround for this. But for Scooby-Doo, I hope I have made this here a lot better for you and I hope I've explained this in a way that you can do other things with it as well. If not, do give me a shout and I'll try and help out wherever I can. That's it for this here episode. Thank you very much for watching. Again, as I said, if you want to leave a comment or give me some suggestions, do drop down below or visit Discord channel that's linked in the description. But other than that, thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.